Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Serene, and today's video is all about pregnancy hacks. I have 20 pregnancy hacks to hopefully help make your pregnancy a little bit smoother. I am currently 27 weeks pregnant with my first baby. We are having a baby girl. Very, very excited about all of this. And a lot of these tips I learned along the way as issues arose through my own research, through talking to healthcare providers. I do also have the luxury of seeing a physical therapist specialized for pregnancy. I also am married to a certified personal trainer. I'm also a certified nutritionist myself. All of these tips hopefully will help ease your pregnancy and make it a little bit smoother. As always, make sure you speak with your own healthcare provider before starting anything, using anything. Make sure it's cleared with them. Bodies are all different and react differently to certain ingredients and physical activity. So listen to your body, make sure nothing hurts, and it should feel good. Without further ado, let's get started with 20 pregnancy hacks. Pregnancy hack number one, the shape of your pregnancy pillow. I would advise you to pick up a pregnancy pillow pretty early on in your pregnancy so you get the most bang for your buck. I started with this weird C-shape pillow first, and unfortunately, I felt like it was deflating pretty quickly along my pregnancy. I don't hate it, but it wasn't the best for my body and what it, I needed it for. I actually spoke to my physical therapist, and she personally recommends a rectangular long body pillow that's a little firmer. So I picked up the firmer one because as you can see with the original one, it started to deflate, it didn't hold its shape very well, and if you notice that my feet and my ankles are actually touching, even though I'm being supported at my thighs and my knees, it's not quite the amount of support. What you really want is for your top leg to be even with your hip, to really have a nice firm support, and your entire top leg to be supported to be at the same level as your hip. This will prevent low back pain. I am typically a right side sleeper, but I also like to sleep on my stomach as well as my back. So sleeping positions do change when you're pregnant and further along in your pregnancy. So making sure that you are as comfortable as possible throughout your pregnancy, getting adequate and restful sleep is really important. It also prevents back pain and for me, shoulder and neck pain as well. So if I could do it over again, I would just go ahead and purchase the rectangular full body pillow that is firmer, cooling, and gives much better support. This pillow switch up was a huge game changer when it came to my low back pain and immediately improved my sleep. Hack number two, seems kind of obvious, but you must drink a lot of water. As your pregnancy progresses, you need more and more water. Now, the important thing here is to not chug your water, but to drink it throughout the day and remain hydrated throughout the day. A great hack for making sure that I get enough water throughout the day and remain hydrated is having a large water bottle with a straw. I love my hydro flask with the straw. It does not stay sealed, so if you throw it in your bag, it will leak. However, just carrying it around the house with me and even just bringing it with me on walks is a great option. It's 32 ounces. I fill it up at least twice a day. It keeps my water nice and cool or room temperature, however you like it, and the straw function helps me sip on it as I'm working at my desk. Making sure that you are hydrated throughout the day and getting plenty of fluids is a great way to prevent headaches, swelling, and leg cramps. Now, you most likely will also have to pee a little bit more frequently with your growing baby and the pressure on your bladder, which makes you maybe not want to drink as much water, and if you start swelling, you might also be tempted to not drink as much water. However, those are not good reasons. You actually really want to remain hydrated to actually avoid swelling, headaches, and avoid leg cramps, and yes, you might have to go to the bathroom a couple times more, but it's totally worth it. And a tip about you know not having to get up too often in the middle of the night is if you remain hydrated from the second you wake up, throughout the day, you can kind of 
slow down on your liquids maybe an hour before bedtime and this way you can maybe minimize a little bit of those nightly pee sessions however it's really important to stay hydrated no matter the inconvenience of an extra bathroom run squats 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 Everybody I've talked to who remained active or even wasn't very active, they always recommend doing squats. Squats will help strengthen your lower body and if done properly, will also strengthen your pelvic floor. We really wanna make sure our, our pelvic floor remains nice and strong and sturdy. You also wanna make sure your lower half of your body is nice and strong and stable and sturdy as your belly grows. It's also going to help you with labor and delivery and of course recovery. Squat, squat, squat. One of my friends who had two baby girls naturally recommended doing the amount of squats every single day as many weeks of your pregnancy. So if I'm 27 weeks pregnant, I would do 12, 27 squats a day. Just try to get those in. Make sure you have good form. Make sure you're squeezing your tush at the top of the squat. And when you're bending down, make sure that you're not overextending your back, your neck, or arching or do any anything weird. Our center of gravity is shifted a little bit. So go slow, go easy, use a mirror, check your form, slow and steady, and good form is more important than how many you can do, but definitely get those squats in, ladies. Hack number four, shea butter and rosehip seed oil. Shea butter and rosehip seed oil are great ingredients to look for to minimize stretch marks. Now stretch marks are predominantly based on your genetics. However, by using shea butter and rosehip oil, you are able to minimize the appearance of stretch marks or even keep your skin more elastic for the stretching and to avoid as many stretch marks as possible. I like to do, the second I found out I was pregnant, is rub that shea butter into the skin, making sure it's nice and moisturized and elastic, and I like to top it off with a little rosehip seed oil. You can use any 100% certified organic fair trade shea butter. I just am using shea moistures, and I warm it up between my hands and rub it into any of the areas that I feel like are more prone to stretching or gaining weight. So while we can't really control whether or not we're going to get the stretch marks, we can do our best to minimize the stretch marks, heal them, and also prep our skin for stretching. Because even if you don't get the stretch marks, you want your skin to stay nice and elastic. I don't know about you, but I needed an anti-chafe stick, and I wanted one that was clean, toxic-free, and safe for both myself and for baby. So I found this Mega Babe anti-chafe stick, which I use on my inner thighs. I definitely noticed my inner thighs rubbing a little bit, especially when I was wearing shorts and dresses. A lot of people have chafing in different areas, and I recommend just going ahead and purchasing a chafe stick to make your life a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're in hot, humid weather. Just do it. And even if you're not pregnant, this is a great hack to be more comfortable. I love that this one particularly did not rub off on my clothes and show any weird residue. I also like that it was very lightweight. And while there is technically a scent, they also have a scent-free one. Neither one do I really smell much of anything. And I'm very, very hypersensitive to scents right now, especially pregnant. Hack number six, get comfortable shoes with a nice, thick sole right away. During pregnancy, our body releases a hormone called relaxin, and relaxin actually relaxes our muscles and our tendons, and what ends up happening is the arch of our feet actually start becoming relaxed through the relaxin and doesn't have as much support as it usually does. This can cause people with flat feet to have a really particularly hard time, and for even those of us who didn't typically have any foot issues to start to notice achy feet, which then can cause low back pain and shoulder pain. I always love my Adidas slides. I wear these around the house and around the neighborhood. I do wash them and sterilize them if I step outside of the house in them, but these are by far the most comfortable slippers I own, and I love that I can just slip them on, because another thing is you want ease of 
putting on these shoes. Adidas slides are great as house shoes. They're also just great if you wanted like casual slippers instead of the very flat flip flops, I would recommend. When I go and I know I'm gonna be on my feet a little bit longer, I really love my Dior sandals. I splurged on these through my pregnancy because I knew that I was really only gonna be wearing shoes I could slip on and I needed shoes that did not have a heel but had a really nice sturdy sole. And these Dior slides have a nice sturdy sole with a nice bump where my arch is. I love these, they're a little bit harder, they're definitely very sturdy dirty, but I am able to walk around for hours and stand on my feet in these very comfortably and they're easy for me to slide on. Another really comfortable shoe is a gift from my husband for my birthday. These are the Fila Destroyer sandals. They're Velcro, so they're really easy to put on still, but I've noticed already at 27 weeks, I don't reach for them quite as much because I have to bend over to strap them on with a Velcro and bending over is just not something I love doing right now. But both have really thick soles, both have really nice support, and both have a little arch support. The Dior ones are definitely a thicker, sturdier sole and support in the arch. The Fila ones are a little bit cushier, but just as supportive and really, really comfortable. I love that thick sandal sole. These are the three pairs of shoes I've worn since I've been pregnant. Occasionally, I will slip on a pair of sneakers to work out, but I'm not doing crazy hit training or running or cardio or anything like that I just slip on my normal workout shoes which is either the Adidas Ultra Boost or the APL. Hack number seven is using a guasa on your face for depuffing. Now I love this ritual and I typically do it on others for Facial Fridays and ASMR videos, but I recently treated myself to a new guasa to do on myself every morning after my workouts. We feel soothed in the mornings, especially when the weather has been warmer. I know a lot of places it's cooling down, it's now fall, but for me it's still really warm and because I'm pregnant, I'm running even warmer than I normally run. Waking up and having this ritual really helps set my mood, really depuffs my face, promotes lifting, promotes drainage, and I find that I haven't had a lot of puffiness on my face. So whether or not it is for puffiness for you, if you're experiencing it or not, I think it's just nice to take five minutes every morning to set your day up for a relaxing moment and doing something for yourself. If you'd like more tips on how to use guasa, I do have playlists of professional estheticians using guasa on me as well as me using guasa on others and those videos can be found on my channel. Hack number eight is owning a pair of compression socks. Now whether or not you start developing swelling early on, at some point most likely you will be swelling in your feet and ankle area. Now this is due to the fact that our blood volume has doubled because we're mostly standing or sitting with our feet down and our feet are usually below our heart, it is going to cause the blood to kind of pool in that area and then it causes swelling. A way to counteract that is wearing compression socks. If you're gonna be on your feet a lot, if you're traveling, if you're sitting in a car for a prolonged period of time, or just experiencing a lot of swelling, compression socks are a great way to minimize the swelling and take care of that problem. They also feel really nice and comforting and I found that I actually like sleeping with my compression socks on occasion if I notice that my ankles and my feet feel a little bit swollen and when I wake up I'm almost good as new so I love compression socks you can get fun ones plain ones so definitely invest in a pair hack number nine Going along with the foot swelling and ankle swelling, elevate your legs. This goes from if you're standing at your desk or standing at work or standing and doing the dishes, try to remember to elevate one of your feet at a time. And you can do this by stacking a couple of books and putting one foot on the books and just switching it up every couple of minutes. Also, if you're sitting and watching TV, elevate your feet. I use my exercise ball or you can stack a bunch of pillows and and just lay back a little bit and put your feet up. So whenever you can elevate your feet, remember to do so and that will also help prevent the swelling or relieve the swelling. Hack number 10, magnesium lotion 
for leg cramps. Now, everybody I've spoken to seems to start to get leg cramps later on in pregnancy, especially when sleeping in the middle of the night. Now, something to prevent this is obviously staying hydrated and making sure you're eating lots of nutrient-dense foods that have a lot of minerals that we all need, like zinc and magnesium and iron. But sometimes we still are going to get those leg cramps. Now, something that my physical therapist recommended was getting a magnesium lotion, because this way you can massage the magnesium lotion before bedtime into the areas that you typically get your leg cramps or foot cramps, and you can target the magnesium into those muscles because it is not being taken orally. You don't have a risk of having bowel problems. So I do take 400 milligrams of magnesium daily to help with overall health. It does help with a lot of things, including leg cramps, but 400 milligrams really isn't a lot to be targeting leg cramps, and I can't really take more than that because it becomes a laxative. If you find that you're dealing with really bad leg cramping, just massage the magnesium lotion into your calves, your shins, and your feet before bed or when you wake up or throughout the day, you really can't go wrong with that. And I've noticed a huge improvement. I rarely get leg cramping right now at 27 weeks. I'm sure it's going to amp up as I get bigger and closer to my due date. This has been a huge, huge, huge game changer for me. And staying hydrated is really important as well. I spoke with my physical therapist about that. And the days that I get the worst leg cramping is because I either had to fast or not drink water for a lab work or lab test. During my first trimester, I experienced extreme nausea and fatigue, and something that really helped me not feel as awful all the time was diffusing essential oils that were relaxing and also anti triggering to my nausea. So for me, that was eucalyptus and peppermint. Now this is going to be different possibly for each person, but I do find peppermint, ginger, eucalyptus to be very, very soothing for most women experiencing nausea. So I recommend diffusing essential oils that are safe for both you, baby, and pets that can help soothe your nausea. So check with your healthcare provider and also check with yourself if peppermint and eucalyptus is soothing to you. I also really love spraying mixes of peppermint and eucalyptus on myself throughout the day. It was very refreshing. It helped wake me up. It helped with any major triggers of nausea. I didn't take much for my nausea. I mainly focused on aromatherapy and just listening to my body and getting lots of rest, but I swear by eucalyptus and peppermint oil. Just make sure you're not allergic to it and make sure you're using a high quality pure essential oil if you're diffusing it in your home or using it on yourself and always dilute the essential oils. Get yourself a personal fan. I run hot normally and then I got pregnant and I ran extra hot and then it became summer and I became super, super hot. So this personal fan has been a game changer and the best part is it's actually made for a stroller fan. So you can put this on the stroller after you deliver your baby. But I purchased it early off of my registry because it has amazing power. It runs on battery operated that you charge through a USB cord, which is super easy. The battery lasts for days. It also oscillates. So there's just so many options with this little mini fan. It's about $21 on Amazon. Greatest find ever. I ended up buying two. I'm gonna be taking it with me to the hospital. And then after I'm done with it, I know baby girl is going to love it as well on her stroller. Hack number 13 is get yourself a squatty potty if you don't already have one. Something that women complain about a lot during pregnancy is constipation and also hemorrhoids. Now the hemorrhoids usually are caused from the constipation and pushing too hard to move the bowels through your system and releasing. So having a squatty potty will alleviate a lot of the constipation and pressure when you can't go. A big tip is to get one that is aesthetic pleasing and matches the rest of your bathroom so it's not an eyesore when you do use it make sure that it helps elevate your feet high enough that your knees are slightly above your hips and you want to make sure you're relaxing so even though you might feel a little constipated don't push too 
hard. Don't overdo it. Let it kind of just move through you and it will come. So this will avoid hemorrhoids, help your bowels move through your system a lot easier. This is also just a great thing to have even if you're not constipated and pregnant. It helps you move your bowels through so much quicker and it's something that every household should really have because it just makes pooping so much easier. Sunblock, 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 sunblock. I did not believe how sensitive my skin would actually become to the sun since becoming pregnant. But I had gotten sunburned so much more frequently in the beginning of my pregnancy, even though I was wearing SPF. So make sure you're wearing a physical and chemical SPF that's toxic free and reef safe of SPF 30 or higher every single day of all skin exposed to the sun. The last thing you want is getting excess moles, skin damage, skin tags, discoloration, melasma. So many issues can be prevented by protecting your skin from the sun, especially while you're pregnant. A lot of women experience melasma and skin tags and discoloration because of pregnancy, but this can be prevented by wearing sunblock, wearing a hat, and staying in the shade. It's really important to protect your skin always, but even more so when pregnant because your skin does truly become way more sensitive. One of the hardest things for me when I started to really have to look at maternity clothes was that I did not like the ruching on most maternity tank tops and t-shirts. I found that it wasn't very flattering on me and I didn't think that it was going to last very long in my wardrobe. So I found these tank tops at Target that is from their maternity collection, but that doesn't have the ruching, yet it is very, very stretchy and comfortable and still forms to my belly bump and will continue to form to it as I progressively get bigger. So I sized in my original size before pregnancy, which is a size small, and I just love that it doesn't look like maternity tank tops, but it is definitely a maternity tank top. So I think it gives me a much smoother line, a much better silhouette. I can see myself wearing this for the rest of my pregnancy as well as well after my pregnancy because it doesn't have that weird ruching that a lot of maternity tank tops have. The best part is these are under 10 bucks each. Hack number 16, using a lacrosse ball to relieve any aches and pains during pregnancy. Especially right now with COVID-19, I haven't been able to get very many massages or any really spa treatments or anything like that. So using this lacrosse ball, it's under $5. I put it in the area that is feeling tense, like my shoulders and neck area is really where I have a lot of tension, I hold a lot of my stress, and I put it against the wall and against the area of tension, and you just lean against it and start massaging that area. It is incredible, and you want to just make sure that you hold it in that area until you feel that that muscle is being released. You can move it around a little bit. You can use it pretty much anywhere. You can even use it on your buttocks, lower back. Just avoid the spinal cord and the spine. You can also control the pressure, and this way you can do it as often as necessary. It's way more affordable than a massage, and many of us can't get them right now. Hack number 17 is to make sure you're exfoliating your entire body and your belly. Exfoliation is great at helping detoxify you entirely, but more importantly, to help sloth off any of that excess dead skin cells. This will allow your shea butter, your rosehip oil, and all of your yummy moisturizers to be able to penetrate treat your skin a little bit better and do its job more efficiently. And I also like exfoliating because it's a nice treat you're giving yourself and your skin starts to feel baby soft, especially when using the shea butter afterwards. Hack number 18 is about pelvic release. So often we're told when we're pregnant to focus on Kegels and we forget about the release. I was talking to my physical therapist and she actually recommends focusing on breathing in and as you breathe out to also think about releasing and opening up your pelvic floor muscle. And if you really wanted to, you could take a mirror and put it down there and you should be able to see your vaginal muscles kind of relax and open up. This is going to help you with labor and delivery. This will help you with your surges or your contractions and when you 
start to push. So this is not about pushing, it's about knowing how to relax the pelvic floor and your pelvis. So as much as we should practice our Kegels, we also have to practice the release. And I recommend doing this at least 10 times a day. Hack number 19 is lukewarm Epsom salt baths. You don't wanna overheat your body, so you wanna make sure your bath water is warm or temperate and I did not think I would enjoy this but I actually really enjoy it and some days I even go cooler on the water to almost a cold bath this is super super soothing for your entire body but this is very helpful if you put the Epsom salt into the bath to help relax tense muscles soothe body aches any swelling any achy feet ankles Epsom salt baths are absolutely a miracle worker and just so, so luxurious and lovely and very affordable to do at home if you have a bathtub. And my biggest hack, stay active. It is so important to remain active as long as you can throughout your pregnancy. Obviously, things must change when they must change. And what I mean by that is if you've always been doing weightlifting and you've always been very active in doing HIIT training, you can continue that with the permission of your care provider and your doctors throughout your pregnancy pretty far into your second trimester. You'll just wanna be careful with certain ab exercises because you don't wanna overwork your abs. You don't wanna do any exercises where you're laying on your belly and you don't wanna do any exercises where you're putting yourself on your back for a prolonged period of time. So things will have to start to adjust, especially after 20 weeks pregnancy, but your body will tell you what you're still capable of doing. And more importantly, you want to just stay active so if that means cutting back your workouts or be going easier on your workouts, that's totally okay. I've completely changed up my workouts based on my pregnancy. However, I still try to do three to five days of some sort of physical activity, which can include just walking around the neighborhood, vacuuming the house, and doing some stretches. It is so important to remain active for as long as possible, as long as it is safe and healthy for you and baby, because it will help you mentally, emotionally, and physically throughout the rest of your pregnancy into labor and delivery. I have a bunch over on LeadFit that I filmed for my first and second trimester. Do what feels good for you and make sure that you're cleared for it. Those are all of my 20 pregnancy hacks. I hope you guys enjoyed the hacks. I thought some of them were very beneficial and new to me and I had never heard about them. So I wanted to share that with you. Some hacks were also very common, so hopefully that gave you more perspective. And also if you're a first time mama, I know that these videos really helped me out when I was looking things up and I also found it really beneficial to talk to professionals in the field to give me some of these tips and I'm happy to share them and pass them on to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw. Give this video a thumbs up. I upload lifestyle videos every Sunday like this. I'd love to see you on my blog, my Instagram. Everything will be linked in the description box along with anything I mentioned in the video that I can find. So until next time, have a beautiful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye.